overlapping in, in large fraction. And the data devices, in terms of where people are, are sipping data on, are shifting from one device to the other and back and forth. And, and yet not generating twice the data traffic. It's something like 1.3% of the data traffic. So I think that's likely to be the pattern for the next few years. And, and after that, who knows? Larry, any questions? Or, yeah. Uh, we've already said what we have done with Larby, we've turned this into a high-performance computing architecture, and we already announced that we'll have the first product coming out uh, 2012. This is a market that will require this highly parallel inter-architecture based processing, and we've seen great performance coming out of it. We're shipping as we speak uh, software development vehicles using the lobby architecture, we now call the, this family of products the Knight family, and you'll continue to see more of this coming on. We continue to analyze the possibilities of using this architecture to graphics. At this stage, we are extremely happy with what we get from our current personal graphics architecture, which deliver astonishing results, as both Paul and I talked about. And uh, as we said, in the near future, we don't see us getting into this kind of graphics. Thank you, thank you for your question. Number three. Nathan Brookwood, Inside 64. First, I just want to make a comment. You already make great tech, tech processors for tablets. I've been using this kind of form factor for years, and I would have to pry it out of my cold dead hands. But then a question. Uh, in past IDFs, Paul, you've always spoken a lot about how Intel was going to be getting into smartphones. I didn't hear very much about smartphones now. Are you de-emphasizing that as a strategic kind of uh, opportunity uh, for now? Absolutely not. Uh, not de-emphasizing. Uh, it's still a major focus of our investment. Uh, we just didn't have any announcements today. I, I talked about handhelds a couple of times in my, in my commentary. Uh, you'll see some stuff uh, and Doug's talk tomorrow in terms of where we are and progress on that. Um, we're moving towards, um, let me say, the, the, the launch window of a couple of major phones in 2011. And you kind of lock down before that and you go through the interoperability testing and, and those kinds of things for the networks. And that's where we are. So there's really nothing to say until uh, those devices launch on the networks next year. Thanks. Uh, number one, uh, Rick, is there? Yeah. Uh, David, good to see you here as the Mike Meister. Uh, Paul, Donna, you both gave a great uh, case for the fact that 25 times graphics performance isn't just rendering, uh, but it's also for, uh, for image capture, for protecting bodies and executive donuts, uh, for, for gesture management. Uh, could you share with us what some of your thoughts are as to how we'll communicate that to, to business, professional, institutional, consumer customers as one of the values of the platform moving forward, please? Can you from a marketing perspective or end user? Uh, marketing and end user. Well, I mean, you've seen us start shifting all of our messaging, and, 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 and even Dottie had kind of the tagline up there on Sandy Bridge about uh, visual computing. And, and, I, and I think in general, when someone says, well, what's visual computing? That gives you the opportunity to say, well, it's this, 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 this. Uh, but in, I think people are realizing that media performance, particularly around video and HD video, is, is the real issue here in terms of capturing, editing, encrypting, moving, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where the, the new instructions and the hardware acceleration at Sandy Bridge will really shine. So uh, we'll, our, our consumer marketing will be around the visual experience as opposed to the graphics experience. And we'll use uh, in-store demos to, to reinforce that. Yeah, there's a lot of activities we're already doing. We'll, of course, expose uh, much more when we launch the product uh, next year. But we're working with the industry, uh, shipping SDKs to get the more capabilities to really shine when we launch the product. Thank you. Thank you, John. So the mic number two. Uh, real quick, Jim McGregor from Instat. Uh, I guess I have a quick question for each one of you. Paul, first off, you know, we start looking about the uh, software and the applications environments and everything else. Is it really we're still staying with Mego? I mean, the whole we've got a number of different operating systems already for consumer CE devices, and a lot of momentum around a couple of those. You know, is Mego really worth it? And then finally for Dottie, love the stuff about the sensor technology. What is Intel doing to maybe further that sensor technology? Is there anything coming out of the labs or anything else that we're seeing that's going to further that as we, get, as we go forward? Okay, well, let me take the Mego one. I think the, the short answer is yes, it seems, seems to be worth it. Um, 
the, the requirement, when you have a discussion with a service provider or an OEM, the requirement that there is a broadly available, truly open source, open platform uh, software environment for devices in, in a broad sense is very high. Um, the, many of these customers, both service providers and OEMs, want to add their own look and feel, their own value add, their own service models, and quite frankly, to um, extract potentially more revenue out of those streams than they would with some of the other models that are out there. And, and as long as our customers are asking us to do this, we're going to continue. Uh, we, you know, we don't believe in wasting effort for effort's sake. Right now, uh, there's nothing really deployed, but I think that's just a matter of time as we go through this, as I talked about earlier, the interoperability testing, the network accreditations, and so forth. Having said that, I think that, that most service providers will tell you they can support four, maybe five operating environments on the network, not 10. And I think we have a chance of being in that, in that handful of, 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 uh, of operating environments that, that makes it.